It's Friday, February 22nd, 2008. I'm James Kotecki, and this is Playbook TV. Well, I leave one day. One day, and it's the day John McCain faces allegations from the New York Times that he had an inappropriate relationship with a female lobbyist 30 years his junior. A relationship that may have had some juicy non-legislative components. John McCain, wife by his side, denied the story up and down, which makes me want to sing. Oh, McCain, you were accused of misdeeds. But you say she's just a friend. But you say she's just a friend. Now comes the fallout, the backlash, the blowback. And as Politico's Martin and Allen report, McCain was able to turn the story to his advantage because if there's anything conservatives dislike more than John McCain, it's the New York Times. El Rushbo himself, not exactly a rabid McCainiac, brutally attacks the Times from behind his golden EIB microphone. McCain even raised money on the story and now probably wishes the Times would attack more often. Next, another high-stakes debate between Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton last night in Texas aired on CNN and Univision, where the first, uh, first the accent of Univision panelist Jorge Ramos seemed like the only unique thing about another boring opportunity for the candidates to disagree slightly and politely. As Politico's Brown and Vogel report, despite the fact that Clinton faces a critical must-win contest in Texas and Ohio on March 4th, and she needs to get back her mojo somehow, it wasn't the all-out mudslinging slugfest the American people so desperately want and deserve. The best Clinton could do was refer to Obama's use of Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick's rhetoric as not change you can believe in, but change you can Xerox. Not only did that joke suck, the oxygen out of the room, but also I'm not really sure those two things are actually in opposition. Just because your coworker copies his butt in the Xerox machine, it doesn't mean the original isn't hideously real. Finally, here's a Groovadelic story straight out of the 1960s. Okay, actually, it's the 1990s, but it involves people from the 60s. Politico's Ben Smith reports that back in the psychedelic year of 1995, Barack Obama met with a couple of smooth cats, William Ayers and Bernadine Dorn. The pair is known for their anti-war domestic bombing activities in the 1960s as part of the Weather Underground. Obama's meeting with those who some would consider to be radical leftist terrorists as part of his run for the state Senate stands in stark and funky contrast to his current campaign based largely on transcending ideological divides and generally mellowing out. Well, that's it for today's hit. Check out politico.com slash playbook for more stories, including questions over Clinton's best moment in the debate. And don't worry, I'll see you again on Monday after I've finished thoroughly windexing the Xerox machine right here on Playbook TV.